A colony of bees was living in this old storage box in someone's backyard and I was called to remove them. The only thing I knew about these bees beforehand was that they had been living in this box for many years and that the bees had recently started to sting anyone who got close to their hive. But the entire time that I was setting up my equipment, these bees were not trying to sting me at all. So I gave the bees some smoke so that they would move away from the entrance of their hive. And when they did, I saw a ton of bright and beautiful comb. So I slowly lifted the lid of the box, or at least that's what I tried to do. This hive was so big and the lid was so heavy that I really couldn't lift it much at all. But I needed to get the lid of the box open wide enough to access the entire hive. But I couldn't lift it anywhere close to that. Luckily, these bees were being very docile and they were not trying to sting me as I figured out what to do next. My original plan was to just slowly lift the lid and flip it over while keeping the comb intact and being able to rest the lid on the fence behind me. But it was pretty clear at this point that none of that was going to happen. So I needed to just do the best I could and make a new plan as I went along. So I grabbed my smoker to clear the bees off the other side of the box. I was honestly shocked that I had not yet needed to grab my bee veil at this point because I was just lifting this hive up and down over and over again. And I could see a lot more comb inside the bin now. And I could tell that I was about to uncover a huge hive, so I was getting pretty excited. So I gave the lid one good lift with all my might, and I was finally able to get the lid open wide enough for me to easily access the entire hive. But I wasn't going to be able to rest the lid on the fence, so I needed to find something as quickly as possible so that I didn't have to drop the lid back down again. I found this plastic box which was pretty sturdy and worked just fine for the moment. There were bees flying everywhere, so I grabbed my smoker to encourage them to go in another direction. They still weren't being very defensive, which meant that I could continue to choose to work alongside them without wearing any protective equipment. But I needed a more permanent solution to hold the lid up, so I found a 4x4 and swapped it out for the plastic box since it was taller and much more trustworthy. It also let me have easier access to the hive, which was going to be very helpful since this hive was even larger than I expected. These bees even got creative and built their hive into a couple of tires, so I knew that I had a lot of work ahead of me. So I gave the bees some smoke and I started removing the hive. But I had already been out there working in the heat for a while, so I decided to try a bit of the honey for myself. And the honey that these bees had made was warm and delicious. I honestly could have eaten the entire comb, but I had a lot of work ahead of me. This was a really big hive, and it looked like the bees had filled it with everything they needed to survive. Some of the first pieces of comb I could see were full of bright and beautiful colors of pollen. So I gave the bees a bunch more smoke to clear them from the first piece of comb. It's always easier removing the comb if the bees aren't on it and I don't have to worry about squishing any with my hands. So after the bees cleared off the comb, I started cutting out the first piece. This hive was so big and there were so many bees that even I was surprised at how docile they were being but I was also incredibly grateful. So I worked as carefully as I could with each delicate piece of comb that I put into a frame. Then I just moved on to the next piece, and with every piece I cut, I was looking for the queen. However, in a removal this size, it's typical for the queen to go deep into hiding as soon as the bees know that something is happening. So at this point in the removal process, I was really most concerned about getting as much of the comb into the new hive as carefully as I could and preserving everything for the bees. This piece of comb was even larger than the last, and in addition to being full of food, this one also had a ton of baby bees on it. Any comb with brood or baby bees is not only important to save for the health and wellness of the colony, but the worker bees will naturally want to take care of the baby bees, so any bees that I put into the new hive would be enticed to stay there even without their queen, just to take care of the baby bees. This hive certainly didn't disappoint. It was a lot of fun to remove. This comb was full of food, brood, eggs, and larvae, 
So I worked carefully to secure everything into frames of the new hive using rubber bands, which the bees would later chew through and remove from the hive themselves. I just kept cutting comb off the lid and putting it into the new hive. And then I couldn't help myself but to get a few handfuls of bees into the new hive. There were a bunch of bees hanging out on the lid of the hive, and they didn't really seem to be in a rush to leave, so I thought I would help them get a move on. And with every handful of bees I scooped, I was searching for the queen. But I still had a long way to go in this removal, and even after I had removed most of the comb and made the new hive bigger, there was still the stack of tires that had even more comb in it. But it was pretty incredible to see how these bees had built their hive into these tires, and it really seemed like a great, well-protected, well-insulated spot for them. But it sure did make my job a bit more difficult. All of the comb in the tires was full of honey. The comb also wasn't built very uniformly, and the bees really expressed their creativity here. Since the new hive was completely full, and if I added anything else to it, I simply wouldn't be able to lift it. I put all of the honey that was in the tires into a bucket, and I would feed it all back to the bees once I got them home. So I just kept pulling honey out of these tires. I pulled probably 30 or 40 pounds of honey out of these tires. There was just honey everywhere. I was getting a little concerned that I had not yet found the queen at this point. I had been in this hive for a couple of hours by now and it was getting dark, and I felt confident that this colony had a queen, but I just wasn't entirely confident that I would find her. She could have easily drowned in a flood of honey or been hurt in the removal process no matter how careful I try to be. So I spent some time smoking the bees and searching for the queen, or looking for any clues that the bees would give to tell me where she was. And all of a sudden, I spotted a circle of bees on the outside of the box. There she was, the queen of this mighty colony. I was so relieved to find her, and I was just in awe of her. So I put her in a clip to keep track of her and to keep her safe, and I put her in the new hive. You can see how quickly the bees went to greet her and to care for her. They were instantly attracted to her scent, so I gave the bees in the box a bunch of smoke to encourage them to move into the new hive. But there were so many bees and it was already getting so dark out that I actually left this hive overnight to give the bees more time to move in, and also because there was no way I was going to move this giant hive in the dark. So when I went back the next day, most of the bees had moved into the new hive, and all I had left to do was to give the bees some smoke to really clear out the box and to get the new hive into my truck. But moving this hive was actually going to be one of the most difficult parts of this removal. So I definitely put my suit on for this. I think this hive and I weighed about the same, so I knew there was a fair to midland chance that I could drop the entire thing. But either way, it would certainly be a struggle for me to get this thing into my cart, and I would definitely have to rest the hive against my body. So I just took a deep breath and lifted the hive with everything I had, and I got it into my cart. You can see the bees on my neck there where the hive was resting on me. But I was just so relieved to have the hive safely in my cart. So I wheeled the bees out of the backyard, and I loaded them into my truck, and we drove home, and it was another great day of saving the bees.